Hi, I'm Dr. John McCallick. I'm an assistant professor of accountancy at University College Dublin. I published a book on introductory financial accounting using IFRS that you can download at the link below. This playlist of videos explains all the important concepts and techniques that are in the book and that you will need to prepare basic financial statements. I've included a, a link to the uh, playlist of videos uh, below as well. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you found this content helpful. In previous videos, we saw how transactions are recorded that affect items on the balance sheet. So we saw things like the uh, company acquire a new asset like a motor vehicle. In this video, we will see how transactions that affect revenues and expenses are recorded using the double entry system. So revenues, revenues are um, items like uh, sales uh, from selling goods to our customers. Uh, and there's other uh, revenue items as well, like deposit interest earned or various types of interest that could be earned or maybe rent receivable from uh, the company or entity renting out uh, some property um, and also gains from the sales of non-current assets. These are all um, gains. Uh, uh, some of them are called revenues and some of them are called gains. Um, and uh, we record them in slightly different ways. Uh, we're going to focus here really on the recording of sales to customers, which is the most basic case. Um, according to um, uh, the conceptual framework, income is increases in economic benefits during the accounting period in the form of inflows or enhancement of assets or decreases of liability that result in increases in equity. So if you think back to the accounting equation that we discussed in previous videos, you saw that assets minus liabilities equals equity. And uh, sometimes we have transactions that increase an asset and don't decrease uh, or don't increase liability or decrease another asset. In fact, what they do is increase equity. And the sales transaction is an example of this kind of transaction where we sell uh, uh, goods to somebody um, and they uh, pay us uh, for the goods um, and that increases our assets, our bank account, but it doesn't um, decrease another asset or, a, another, or increase another liability. So the effect of that transaction is on equity. And I'll be trying to explain um, uh, later on in this video at uh, that point a little bit uh, better. Expenses, well, expenses are the opposite. Expenses are decreases in economic benefits during the accounting period in the form of outflow, outflows or depletions of assets or incurrence of liability. So when uh, um, you know the ESB bill comes in or the electricity bill comes in and falls on the accountant's desk, um, it's clear that the company has another liability that will have to be paid off in the future. However, there isn't, you know, there isn't anything happening in assets that's counteracting that. And in fact, that is a decrease in equity. So the other side of the equation is a decrease in equity. Uh, examples of the kind of things that we see in expenses, purchases of inventory for resale. So we purchase things and then we resell them to our customers, salaries and wages, light and heat, taxation, or a loss in the sale of other non-current assets. So there's lots of different examples of expenses uh, that the company incurs. Um, depreciation would be a, a, another expense as well. So let's get on then and try and record these uh, transactions using the double entry uh, system. And as we saw, or as I said a minute ago, revenue, um, the accounting equation is critical here to understanding what's going on. 
So assets minus liabilities equals equity is the basic accounting equation. We can change that around a little bit and break down equity into its components. So assets minus liabilities is opening equity plus profit for the year. And what we do is we take this profit idea, we put all the increases in equity due to revenues and the decreases due to expenses, we add them up and we put them into this profit figure. So every time we make a sale or incur an expense, we don't adjust the equity account directly or immediately. What we do is we put those items to special accounts that we then accumulate in a statement called the income statement. And uh, at the end of the accounting period, we see what the net amount is in the income statement. That is called profit. And that goes into equity all in one go. Okay, it goes into equity all in one go. We don't, you know, just drip little bits of sales and expenses and things like that into and out of equity as the year is going on. We accumulate everything in the income statement and um, then um, uh, put in the profit for the year at the, at the end of the year. And that means that profit in general is equal to income minus expenses and the income statement, I suppose it should really be called the income and expenses statement, the income statement uh, shows us how this profit figure is calculated. So let's look at profit and equity then and try and work all this out. Um, this is for Murphy's Muffins Limited and it is the statement of financial position um, uh, at the end of the month of January and then at the end of the month of February for year one. And let's look at January first. Okay, so let's look at January. Um, well, what we have here is um, uh, Murphy's Muffins have assets of a machine of 500 bank of 2000 and a bank loan of 1500 and that's 2500 minus 1500 that gives us total assets minus liabilities of a thousand and that is balanced on the other side by equity now supposing during the month of february some things happen in the business okay um and at the end of february we see that the bank has changed to 2,500. The liabilities are the same and the issued share capital is the same. That is the amount that the shareholders originally put in. So how are we going to balance the books? And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to <clears throat> fill in this gap here with a profit figure and balance uh, out the uh, statement of financial position that way so this is this is um this is what we've done we now have retained income of 500 and uh that now balances our um our assets minus liabilities of 1500 are equal to our equity of 1500 okay now uh, you know what 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 else is happening here well like say this is what happened in the income statement for Murphy's muffins. We sold 1,000 euros worth of muffins and they cost us 500 and the profit for the financial period is 500 and that gets transferred into the, um, uh, into the statement of financial position through retained earnings. Okay, so that goes into retained earnings, sorry, uh, retained earnings, and that's what balances the statement of financial position. So what does all this mean? Well, it means the income statement explains the change in the firm's equity by listing all of the firm's income and expenses. And we have a very simple income statement up here, but it could be, you know, it could be a whole page of stuff with revenue at the stop and then all the expenses. And the retained income account in the statement of financial position should be equal to retained income from last uh, period, 
uh, in this case we don't have any retained income from last period plus the profit for this financial period and, and, and in this case that's 500 um, so the retained income for the end of this period is 500 what does that represent well it represents the profit for the period and in a more long run, running firm it would represent the cumulative profits for all of the periods all of the accounting periods so far okay now this is an important point uh, this is what accountants call balancing uh, the balance sheet uh, it means that your income statement has all the income and expense items in it that match up with what happened to all the assets and liabilities in the balance sheet and um, uh, the accounting equation is in balance assets minus liabilities equals equity so this is what's meant by balancing the accounts and it is a very important concept to grasp once you've got a grasp of this concept i think um you know recording transactions becomes a, a lot easier and thinking about how things affect the balance sheet and the income statement becomes a lot uh, easier so you remember that we had a table in in earlier videos in relation to um what items we were going to debit and credit depending on what was happening with the transaction and we now have to change this table a bit and add in things that happen because of income uh, because of expenses or losses or revenues or gains so um an increase in in an asset is a, still a debit but we now have other items that can increase other things an increase and in an expense or a loss is also a debit okay so when we see something like uh, the wages expense we are going to debit wages expense credit um, uh, um, we're going to credit bank or a liability for that so we pay wages we're going to do uh, something like that credit items we already saw that when a liability or an equity item increases that we credit that item we now are going to credit revenue or gain items as well okay now I'm not I'm not going to over explain this at this point I think we should look at a few examples and um, you know we'll be we'll be coming back to this point uh, uh, later so supposing we want to record a revenue a business sells goods for 10,000 cash um, this means the bank increases by 10k so we debit the bank we know that from previous videos uh, when you have an increase in an asset you're going to debit that asset so that's debit bank now this this essentially means that equity is increased but we're not going to to credit equity directly we credit a special account called sales and that account is going to get uh, accumulated uh, all the sales for the accounting period will be accumulated in that account and then um, that uh, will be part of the income statement where we'll add everything up and the uh, profit from the bottom of the income statement will go into retained earnings and that's how we'll eventually make our adjustment to equity so we are going to credit sales with 10,000 so it's debit bank credit sales to record a sales transaction recording expenses well supposing the the business pays wages of five thousand the bank decreases by 5k so there's just five thousand gone out of our bank we know from previous videos that um, uh, when a liability or when an asset decreases uh, we should credit the asset so we credit the bank five thousand and usually when you're thinking about these transactions it's easier to think about the balance sheet side that's usually clearer uh, first than thinking about the income statement side helps you to work out the income statement side the wage expense increases by 5k so we debit wage expense with 5,000 
Now, um, uh, this is the same situation as before. We're going to accumulate all the wages for the accounting period in this wage expense account. That's going to make its way into the income statement. It's going to be netted off against all the income items and the profit, which is the net of the um, uh, revenues minus expenses, is going to go into the equity section of the balance sheet um, as a part of retained earnings. Now, th these income and expense items, they make a difference to the trial balance as well, because we're going to have more items on the trial balance than we saw in previous uh, 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 videos. So we know that assets end up on the debit side of a trial balance, but now we also have expenses ending up on the debit side of a trial balance. And liabilities and equity items end up on the credit side of a trial balance, but we now have an extra item, which is income items that end up on the credit side of a trial balance. So to summarize all of this in this video about recording income and expenses, retained income, which is a part of equity, keeps track of increases in owner's equity due to income and expenses. So uh, retained income keeps track of what's happening to owner's equity. Profit is income minus expenses, and that is um, uh, profit is calculated in the income statement, which analyzes the change in equity due to income and expenses. Income items are credits, so they go on the credit side of the trial balance and expense items are debits. And the reason for that is that income items are credits. That's the same as an increase in equity and expense items are debit, same as a decrease in equity. Okay, thank you very much uh, for listening to this video, watching this video. Remember to like and subscribe if you found this content helpful. Bye.